This week on the Ritual Misery podcast, I was shucking, but not corn. <laughs> that sounds like some some pseudoscience to me. I mean, it is a COVID Christmas. <laughs> and we wrap up the year 2020. Oh, that feels so good to say. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 268 for Wednesday, the 23rd of December, 2020. I see, I already messed that up because I meant to modify the date. <laughs> Richard, what day is today? I believe today is the 23rd of December. No, 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 no. What day in March is it? Oh, Whoa. yeah. I Well, that would assume that I can see over to my board. It's 200 and... I don't know, 83, something like that. For Wednesday, <laughs> the 283rd of March, 2020. This is the show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos. We got Kent here, of course, and the voice that you just heard, but uh, you didn't see if you're watching video because I didn't click the button yet, was Richard Gunther. He's here for the year in review. Whoop, whoop. What's going on, Richard? <laughs> Welcome. Hello. How are you? I'm seriously well. trying to see you over to my board. It's two. It is March two hundred sixty-eight. Oh, so, so it's, it's the same as the episode number. How convenient! No, that's amazing. <laughs> is it seriously? Yeah, that's that is just okay. That's that has to be your title. That's insane. <laughs> that's just absolutely <laughs> insane. March two sixty-eight, the year in review. Yeah. Um, man, it's been, a. well, we'll get to the year stuff later, but I, I just want to go and say that I've been on a kick lately watching stuff from the, uh, the, the world science festival. They've got a bunch of basically hour and a half seminars on different science topics from black holes to probability theory, um, quantum mechanics and everything else. <clears throat> I've been watching the shit out of it and I, like, I don't understand half of it, but <laughs> I understand enough of it to catch the general gist of the basics of what they're talking about. And mm. there's just some marvelous, and these are all from like 2014, 2015. It's just marvelous. The, the, the lengths we've come in science in the last 100, 150 mm. years. It's, it's amazing. It, it It is. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, um, I'm I'm sorry. I'm I'm a little bit confused. Are we already into the geek of the week thing because have you even said hello to Kent yet? I I did. <laughs> I, I did. I, I I skipped over him and jumped straight to you as I normally do. <laughs> <sighs> uh, yeah, sorry. So, it's been a year. Absolutely. And you know yeah, the, the advances in science that we've made over the last 100 years is absolutely ridiculous. Like, space travel was barely even thought of as something possible 100 years ago. And then, and then here we are sending people to, well, sending people to the moon and eventually sending people to Mars. And we've got probes and rovers and things all over the galaxy. Well, all over uh, the solar system, anyway. Um yeah, it's just, it, it, it's incredible. Yeah, we've only dropped uh, two pieces of trash in the galaxy from from within our solar system, Voyager 1, Voyager 2. Right, they have right. both crossed that threshold to be into interstellar space. Uh, I think Voyager 2 did it this year and Voyager 1 did it last year. But yeah, we've that's as far out as we've gone. And we can, yeah, it's it's just... Just overall, man, it's really interesting. And I think Elon Musk was right, dude. We're living in a simulation. Like, the math just works out too fancy. <laughs> it's just too fancy. Beecher. Could be. Yep. Beecher. Yeah. Yeah. Beecher <clears throat> needs the information. Yep. We'll, we'll find out. Um, Kent, how, what, what, what's your week been like, man? Oh, crazy. So, uh, we actually had plans for Christmas. Um, so we have, um, another family that, that we're kind of in a bubble together so that we can, um, you know, do holidays and things together. Um, 
But it turns out that um, one of the members of that household might have COVID. And we're, we're waiting for the test results to come back now. Awesome. So needless to say, <laughs> Christmas plans are basically canceled. Uh, of course, we'll do something here at the house. You know, we'll exchange some gifts just between Steph and Luke and me. And uh, we'll probably eat some turkey and watch Christmas movies. So it's not going to be a total bust, but like, you know, holidays are about family and get togethers and all that kind of stuff. And uh, well, Merry Kobe Christmas. <laughs> yeah. Richard, Merry what are your plans Kobe. for Christmas? Yeah. So uh, you Christmas, and Edward sitting watching TV yeah. all day. <laughs> no, totally. That That is pretty much what it's going to be. I think we are going to let ourselves just binge on like, the season of Shit's Creek that we're watching now, which is season five, which is awesome, by the way. But yeah, we we have no plans. We have, you know, usually we get together with his business partner and their family, his goddaughter. We've been invited, but um, no, thank you. No, we're no, we're not doing that. And they're not in our bubble because they have kids that go to events and stuff like that. Uh, this week, though, however, for me, was marked largely by the fact that we were planning to start the year off by getting the hell out of town. I live mm. outside of the D.C. area, mm -hmm. and we wanted to get out of town and uh, rent a house in the Outer Banks with the other couple that we're in a bubble with and be nowhere near D.C., anywhere during the month of January. And hmm. we just learned that her, the, the other couple that um, the wife of that couple, she, her mother is going into the hospital tomorrow with like serious, like life threatening complications. Oh. And so we are likely not going to be spending time with them in January. And now we're trying to figure out, okay, what are we doing in January? Because this kind of impacts our plans too. Right. Mm -hmm. But I don't mm -hmm. want to be in DC. <laughs> right. <laughs> I don't blame you for that part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we, yeah, uh, good. we just put up our tree yesterday. Oh, yeah. God bless you. Yeah, I, I didn't even put one up this year. <sighs> yeah, well, uh, my niece, Evelyn, she drew a picture of a tree, and then they glued, as, a, as an art project for school, they glued sticks to the paper, and then they drew ornaments on that. And my wife was, like, joking. She was like, hey, we can just put that on the wall and just put the gifts underneath that. And I was like, I'm down for, like, go for it. I'm down for a kindergarten Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Like, let's yep. do that. Yep. And I got overridden by by the the semi democracy that is the kids revolting, and we have all the kids here, <laughs> and they were all like, er everyone from the twenty year old down to the five year old were like, no, get the fucking tree, <laughs> and so I did it in the in the the best way possible though, in our living room. So the twins are here and they're in the guest room because we've already moved rooms around. They don't have a bedroom upstairs anymore. They you know their rooms got shifted. Um, they're in the guest room, which is usually where we put the Christmas tree because it's on the front window. You know, you do the traditional thing, you decorate it, and it gives you a reason to decorate the backside because that's facing the window. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we did it in the living room this year, and I did it in the corner, and it's a fake tree that the leave the the branches fold down. So as I'm unpacking the tree from the box, I just kept part of it tucked up stuck it in the little holder thing and then mm. let that part rest against the wall. So we only had to decorate about a third of the tree because two thirds of it is still <laughs> folded up leaning against the oh, wall. Oh yes. Yes. That's very, very smart. So, I wanted to do that actually. I like I like that idea. I like that um, idea. I and we have rules. I set up the tree because it's a, technically an electronic device. It's got built in LEDs and a controller <laughs> and all that stuff. So I set up the of device course. Uh, the kids decorate it, and my wife approves of their decorations. That's the rules. It took me longer to set the tree up, managing the corner and getting it just the right distance to where it's still straight and everything else. Oh, and then I come in at the end and put the put the the star on top because I'm the tallest. Of course you do. Yeah, yeah. Um, sure. It took me longer to get the tree arranged in the corner to where it still looks semi natural without unfolding the entire thing than it took them to decorate the one third of a tree. 
Like, they didn't even open half the decorations. They were just like, oh, my gosh, this is so simple. So I think we'll be doing that from now on. I think that might be our our, our, our spot. Right on. Hell, nice. yeah. And they, they decorated it. My wife came down and said, nope, looks great. This is awesome. And then they sat around and shot the shit and played Among Us for, like, three hours. So. <laughs> Still haven't tried that. Don't. It's it's either addictive or repulsing. Uh, addictive or repulsive, depending on the crowd you're with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The people you play with definitely impacts how fun the game is. Yeah. Mm, okay. <clears throat> no. But yeah, it's but it just as a game, it's it's a really fun game. Like it's it, it's a well put together game. Yeah. Mm. It's very simple. Uh, <clears throat> so I decided that I was tired of waiting for the price of the Best Buy to come down. I went ahead and bought four hard drives today to put into my my updated Synology NAS because I, I got in it's, the mm. old ones run out of space. So I got a new one and we're going to use that for the family stuff and then use the old one for work. That way the wife doesn't get mad that I'm keeping all the new stuff for myself. And what'd you get? 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 I got the Synology <laughs> 920 plus and then I got four easy nice. store, 12 terabyte drives at Best Buy today, ripped open the cases, pulled the hard drives out, which is also called shucking. Drive shocking. Yes. And stuck those in the NAS. So they they are currently doing this the initial setup right now so I can start migrating over after the show. Yeah. Wow. Thirty six yeah. terabytes of hard drive space after formatting. Okay. What brand of drive? They are well they're they're Western Digital easy stores, but the drives oh, okay. inside are actually uh uh I think they're Hitachi. Or no, they're HGST. HGST drives. Okay. Mm, so. All right. Um, Ken, I, I think he put the bar pretty high for being geeky this week. Um. Yeah. Quite a bit. Um. What? I what? didn't do anything shucking, really. Shucking hard. Oh, and I had to take one back because I bought two. Well, they would. Best Buy's app is fucking stupid. So yes. I buy them on the app. Then one of them isn't coming in until like January 9th. Okay, fine. I get it. The store is out of stock. I bought two from that store because they limited it to two or two per person. So I bought two from one store, two from the other Best Buy. One of them isn't in stock. So they, they said, here, we'll give you one. The other one's coming in in January. Okay, well, I'll cancel that. That's no problem. So I went to the closer one and I pull up in the parking lot and I'm getting ready to, to tell them, hey, I'm here. Bring my stuff out to me. And all three of them say Anchorage. Well, I'm at the North Anchorage store. So I said, okay. I went inside to see if they had any in stock. I bought one off the shelf, $10 more because the sale price had gone up since yesterday. Um, I bought it, got in the truck, drove to the Anchorage store, checked in in there. The dude comes out 10 minutes later. He's like, yeah, those are at the North Anchorage store. Oh. You can't tell that it's from a different store until you actually say, I'm here. Once you what say I'm hell? here, it says, "Hey, now that you're at North Anchorage, blah 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 blah." No, motherfucker, I'm at South Anchorage. You know, wow. known as the Anchorage store because it's the older one. Yeah, it was nice. it was annoying. And then yeah, and, and then I came back to the North Anchorage store, the one's closer to my house by like five miles. Um, they gave me two of them, but that one of them didn't match the other three that I had. So then I had to go do a swap out to make sure they all match because I don't want to have one drive that's slightly different than the others. I'd rather have four of the same drives. Uh, OCD or technicalities or 3.3 voltage. I mean, you can blame whatever you want, but I had to make sure that it was right. Oh, who is this? We have a, a random guest appearance on the show. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I had a uh, visitor here. This is Coda. And he doesn't like not being the center of attention. So. <laughs> can confirm. My yellow lab is um, 80 pounds, and he thinks he's a lap dog. Oh, of course. I, Richard, I have pictures of him in your lap. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so, I'm not so saying I, I, you can't really it. refute his claims. <laughs> so he doesn't think he's a lap dog. He knows he's a lap dog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, that was my geeky thing of the week. It was, uh, yeah. That's I uh, yeah I didn't do anything techy really this week. Um, 
But so for for the geekiest thing that that I experienced this week, Boba fucking Fett. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, I'm not gonna get into it, but he he's been on this uh, season of The Mandalorian, and um, yeah, Boba fucking Fett. Uh, I, Boba Fett was always my my favorite Star Wars. Uh, action figure when I was a kid, and mm-hmm. I just was fascinated with this character, this like man of mystery, badass kind of guy. And um, uh, I have really, really enjoyed this season of The Mandalorian in big part because of Boba Fett's involvement. Yeah, uh, it's been great. It, it has been friggin' amazing. And I, I'm, you know, I never watched any of the series that came out of this. I've only seen the movies many, many times for each of them. But when they introduced him in The Mandalorian, I I was going crazy. And I assume, I have to assume by now, you've seen the finale of The Mandalorian. I was literally five feet from my television from the moment <laughs> that someone came down those... no. From the moment that you saw that there was someone fighting their way into where they were at the uh, end yes. in the last scene. And yeah. I was standing at the TV watching it just like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah so my experience was not dissimilar. <laughs> I, I saw all the non-spoiler spoilers on Twitter because, you know, I, I'm still checking Twitter. You know, I, I watched it a day late, so... People I were it. pretty good about it. Well, I saw a lot of things about CGI and this and that. You know, this is the state of CGI 20 years ago, this and that. And I was like, oh, like, what does that even mean? I had no idea it was even related. And then when it happened, I was like, oh, no, that's actually that's actually pretty good. <laughs> yep. like, like, no, that works. Yeah, no, totally. Like, like, yeah, it was awesome. If If you're not watching The Mandalorian yet and you want to, Watch it because you will be spoiled. I guarantee you, this is not going to stay a secret. You will be spoiled. You got to watch this. So good. Yeah, it's 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 just as I was telling Kent uh, in a previous episode. It's not that I like anything about it. The format of the show is okay. The stories that they're throwing at us are okay. The characters are all okay, but. <laughs> Together, they're better than the sum of their parts. And then the fact that it's filling out the Star Wars universe so fluidly and giving us such a bigger picture than the movies ever could have. I love this show. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. So you're saying it's like the Barbara Streisand of uh, TV shows. Together, (laughs) the parts are better as one. Because the parts themselves, eh. (laughs) <laughs> okay. I, I prefer Mecha Streisand, but you know, I, I, I don't know <laughs> nice how many people reference. will get that reference. Very good, very well done. I'm actually, yeah, we're about, uh, I think, six seasons into our South Park binge. Yeah. At this point, we, um, yeah, we we decided to start from the beginning because we we got so many seasons behind. Yeah. And we're just like, you know what? Let's just let's start from the beginning and just go through it. Yeah, that's so that's, that's, that's another another thinking. show that's really evolved. Like they look the same, but their processes change so completely oh, that yeah. it's yeah. Anyway, yeah. All right, what about you, Richard? What was the geekiest thing you did this week? Yeah, so um, this happened today. Actually, today <laughs> on a whim, maybe not a whim. I've been thinking about it for a couple of days, but today on a whim, I bought myself a new Apple Watch and had mm. it delivered in two hours. <laughs> it was kind wow. of awesome actually did, did, so, did you time it on your old Apple Watch <laughs> <laughs> I did not I did not but uh, let's just say I think people know that I, I work on a software product and I am let's just say we haven't announced anything officially but let's just say that we've been doing some Apple Watch development hmm. you know just to you know give it a try yeah and my apple watch was an old one it was an apple watch series three so i had the older 
rectangular screen format mm -hmm. as opposed to the larger format of the four and above. And I thought, you know, I really need to be able to test what we're doing on a bigger screen, see what that looks like outside of just a simulator. And yeah, today I pulled the plug. No, that's not the right term. I pushed the button. No, I don't know. That sounds bad too. Anyway, <laughs> I, I did something that, that made a watch show up at my doorstep two, air, two hours after I wanted it. And that was awesome. Which one did you get? I got the 40 millimeter series six black aluminum. Okay. Okay. So yeah. I would have gotten the 44 millimeter series six black aluminum, but yeah. Cause you're a big dude and I'm a small dude. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> we have had this conversation before. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear God. Yeah. Uh, uh, Kent, what, uh, <laughs> what watch are you sporting right now? Um, the, uh, no watch. Yeah. Yeah. He's sporting the, <laughs> the, the series negative one. That's right. Yeah. Hmm. It, how's that? How's that wine treating you, Amos? It's, mm. it's delicious. Yeah. <laughs> I might need to pour more. I, I think I should make this a thing. <laughs> I think we should do this. Like this should be a thing. We'll, we'll watch. The, we'll do the pouring thing on the show here it makes noise oh you're doing the aeration like you're you're all fancy with it right now well yeah because like i opened the bottle the minute before i started drinking it so. right i i opened mine about 30 minutes before i, I started drinking it so i don't know if my seven dollar wine is gonna really benefit from proper <laughs> aeration but i have no idea if this is good wine or not good wine it was on the wine rack so I don't take my chances. I'm aerating it. <laughs> if uh, if you guys want to take a chance on the Ritual Misery podcast, go to patreon.com slash ritual misery. Amos, what would the what uh, what will people find over there? You'll get the part of the show that Richard and I were talking about before we even went live today, first of all. And that was an important discussion about well, mostly about Kent, but <laughs> because I was late. <laughs> uh, no, it had nothing to do with you being late. It was, it was, it, it, it was given a chance to breathe because you were late. But the conversation was nothing about you being late. Um, there we go. So, so now Kent needs to go into his Patreon and find out what the hell was said. Yeah, exactly. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll you'll get uh, you get bonus material from the beginning and end, and you will get additional information about uh, what we're doing, what was going on with this. You'll get some discounts on the old merch store. Um, and I mean, if you if you up your pledge at the right level, you get some free swag. I mean, it's not free; you're paying for it like in a roundabout way. But <laughs> Patreon will send you swag. And you don't have to pay us for it. They just ship it to you like a patron exclusive hoodie. Because, because cool. hoodies are there. They're a thing. Yeah, that is that is a thing. Uh, by the way, loving your glass there. That's awesome. Uh, two little things here just to kind of set the scene. So one, one of the things we were talking about before we started the show was that I am a patron now. And... Do you remember why I am a patron now and I wasn't before? Mm, no. No. I don't remember this. It's probably I something to do with me, though. I am a patron now because this is what you do. Like, this is how you make your money. This is not a side thing. This is your job now, Amos. Mm. And so... I want to support that. I can't possibly support every podcaster I listen to. Right. So I have to have a filter. I have to have. <laughs> and and if it was just like, oh, these guys are great. I'm going to give them money. I would be broke. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, my filter is if it's a, if it's someone who is like, this is what they do. They make podcasts. Then I give money to it. And I am happy to be giving you guys money um, and a little sneak 
on what we were talking about beforehand, Kent. I was ragging on your audio. We are going to fix that at one of these days. We, we got to fix that. Ah. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but we got to fix it. You're all blasted out. We got to fix it. <laughs> oh, I love an episode with wine. It is. <laughs> wine is always good. Kent, <sighs> is, it, is it that time? Um, yes. Let's do oh, it. I hope we have. Kent. He's all powerful. He's extraordinary. A genius. Game. I cannot contain myself. Kent's game. Presented by Stephen Cogswell. Woo! Yes, it's a game. I love games. <laughs> <sighs> All right, so I stole this quiz. Actually, this is a this is from a a site that I go to uh, sometimes called Pub Quiz Questions HQ, mm-hmm. which is a it's a British website um, where pub quizzes are quite popular. Um, so I snagged one of their 2020 in review quizzes, and um, you know this is why Guinness exists, right? <laughs> okay, but well, we can follow we can follow up on that later. Um, yeah, so uh, Guinness is good for you, and we're going to talk about uh, 2020 in this quiz. Um, the first couple of questions are going to be really hard, unless you're a British citizen. Um, awesome. So, so good luck. Um, Richard, you're the guest, so I'm going to give you the choice if you want to start or go second. I will start. Okay. All right, your first question. Good luck. In the 2020 Brits Awards, Lewis Capaldi won the best single award for which song? Well, that's easy. I don't know. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so the answer is someone loved you. Or no, sorry, someone you loved. Either way, I could have lied and... um, because I've never heard of such a thing. Literally, yeah. no one would have known. Nobody. You were wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nobody. So it was good luck on your first question. Okay. Which which Exeter-based regional airline went into administration in March of 2020? Ryanair. <laughs> Flyby is what I was looking for. You meant Ryanair. Wow. Because it's literally right, the so only European I airline confused. I know I thought of. you said that it, this was hard if you were English. Oh, no, no, no. If you, it would be hard unless you're a British citizen. Oh. Um, I don't even okay, know if the so Brits the rest would of these, The shit. rest of these should be quite a bit easier. Um, Richard, which artist became the first to win all four major Grammy Awards in 2020, collecting Record of the Year, Album of, of the Year, Song of the Year, and Best New Artist? In what year? 2020? No, it was in 2020. Yeah. So which artist was the first to win all four of those at the Grammys? Wow. I should know this. I do not. I have no idea. No guess? Yes. I would say The weekend, only because he got shunned this year. (sighs) I was looking for Billie Eilish. Oh, Oh, that makes sense. Oh, I so don't care. Okay. <laughs> that totally makes sense. All right, Amos. Uh, switching over to movies now. Uh, which British war film starring George McKay and Dean Charles Chapman collected 10 Oscar nominations uh, following its January 2020 release? 1917. That is correct. <laughs> well done, sir. It's only one nice. movie I know of this year. <laughs> That was, I think that's the only movie I saw in theaters this year. Um, wow. That may come up again. Yeah, that, 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 that was a good movie. All right. Um, Richard, in February of this year, which country became the first to make all public transport free of charge? In the UK. Interesting. Not, not in... It's not the answer is not necessarily in the UK. Oh, so uh, some country on this planet made public transportation free. Oh man, you're killing me. Uh, all right, I'm just gonna come up with some random thing because uh, I have no idea. I'm gonna say uh, uh, Australia. That's not a country. That's a that's a. 
like I'm like that I'm like that girl that answered the never mind. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Is Australia your your answer? Do I have a chance to change it to yes, something absolutely. that's not a country? Or that is a country, rather? So yeah, is. let's, let's right. at least make it a country and not a continent, right? Um, let's, mm. let's say, I'm going to say just randomly Germany. You are very close. Right next door, Luxembourg. Wow. Wow. Okay. So all five of them can ride the transit for free. <laughs> Luxembourg is pretty damn small. What was that award show where... That uh, that young lady, I would call her a girl. That young lady, uh, it, they talked about you know all the countries like Africa. That, that's what I just felt like right now oh. when I was talking about Australia as. Well, but a Australia country. is it? Australia is a country though. It's also it's a continent. continent and a country. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, over to you, Amos. Who won the Best Performance by an Actor in a Motion Picture Award at the Golden Globes for his role in the film Joker? Uh, Joe Leno or Jay, Jay Leno? No, no ja, something what? Leno. What? 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 <laughs> ja, what? Jared Leto. What? Wrong movie. Um, I was looking for Joaquin Phoenix. What? Oh, whatever. Not Joaquin, but Joaquin <laughs> Phoenix. I, I I did. I still haven't seen it. So. I, I thought it was a, a good movie. I don't know that I want to watch it again because it's one of those movies that. It has an impact. It. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Kind of bothered me. <laughs> So I, this is a film that I own and I have not watched yet because of that. Because frankly, I thought that the first, not the first, but the second film that featured the Joker oh, right. was equally disturbing. I think this one is even more disturbing because it's presented wow. in such a, just a gritty, realistic kind of um and goes into like um, like mental disorder type yeah. stuff, and it's oof, it's mm. crazy. Okay, all right, Richard, your next question. Yep. According to Forbes magazine, which CEO is the first person in history to have a net worth exceeding two hundred billion dollars? Which CEO? CEO First. specifically, not a company, but a CEO. A CEO, yep. So which person um, was the first to have a net worth exceeding $200 billion? Oh, the first. And it happened yep. this year? Yep. Hmm. Well, I'm going to go for what I think is the obvious answer, but I think I'm going to be wrong. Um, and I'm going to say Tim Cook. It was Jeff Bezos. Uh, Currently yep. the richest person on the planet. Asshole. <laughs> um, yeah, fuck that guy. As I look around my room and see Amazon boxes in here. I mean, I have Amazon stuff everywhere. And, and we all depend on them. And I, I, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep. My problem is with Amazon, it's with wealth disparity, but that's a different podcast. Yeah, topic. for sure, for sure. All right, Amos, a team of British and Kenyan scientists have discovered Microsporidia MB, a potential means of stopping mosquitoes from carrying which disease? Chlamydia. No. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, uh, it's either... <laughs> It's either, uh, it's got to be either malaria or yellow fever, and I'm going to go with malaria because it's the bigger threat, I believe. You would be correct. It is malaria. Wow. Can we can we get a? I, I'm sorry. Can I ask for a scorekeep right now? I think we're at zero to something. <laughs> zero to two. Okay. All right. Mrs. Okay. 
I'm just going to have another drink right now. <laughs> All right. Um, Richard, your next question. In July, NASA launched a mission which will reach its destination on which planet in February of 2021? Looking for a planet. Not a country or Providence. <laughs> yeah, not a continent. Not 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 uh not South Sussex like. <laughs> I think in I'm July muted. NASA launched a mission which will reach its destination on which planet in February of twenty twenty one. You're muted. This is horrifying that I do not know this. Um, <clears throat> so I am going to guess February twenty twenty one left. Here in July. July, I'm going to say Jupiter. Uh, there's no way it can be Jupiter. It's only nine months. It's got to be either Venus or Mars. And we are kind of Mars out right now. So I'm going to go with Venus as my no points um, add in answer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're both wrong. It is, in fact, Mars. <sighs> what? Fuck Mars. <laughs> 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 Overrated. Uh, yeah. Um, all right. For the final question, Amos. In October, New Caledonia had a referendum and decided not to become independent from which country? I believe it's Saladonia, but I'm probably wrong on that. Uh, uh, you might be right. I don't know. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and be wrong along with Pedantic. Uh, we're going to go Belgium. Mm. Right next door, France. Mm. Sounds about right. Yeah. So you guys did not get the D. No. No. <laughs> no. no. Collectively scored 20% on the, on the we, quiz. Wow. We Collectively could. meaning together with me getting zero. <laughs> so, that... so we got a third of the D, right? So we got the Bobbit. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> um, that's one way to look at it. Uh, wow. Okay. All right. And this week's game has been brought to you by Jakarta, Indonesia, where the weather is currently... 89 degrees Fahrenheit. They're looking at a 19% chance of some precipitation and thunderstorms throughout the most of the rest of the week. This forecast for a random location on the globe has been brought to you by, Mike, by Mark Jelinek, our other Ooh. winner for the sponsorship. Also, a All really right. good follow. Yeah, no, he's like, follow, find him on Twitter and follow him because he... He basically is going everywhere in the world and taking pictures of everything that is awesome. Yeah, Mark and Mark's a great guy. Anyway, so he definitely, definitely not on, on. the Check out his. Yeah, not on the streamathon this year. He was on last year and he rocked it out of the park. So, yeah, check out his podcast. What is it about the weather? Yeah, oh, it's it's, it's a it's a, it's evergreen thing. So he describes stuff that you don't have. Mm. It ha doesn't have to be current for you to listen to it. It's it's really good. Yeah, and it's not about forecasts or anything like that. It's a, it's it's how weather affects everyday life things. Yep. And his voice is uh, right up there with BBJ. Like they would go head to head pretty <laughs> good because he's got he's got a voice for radio. Oh, totally. Yep. All right. Twenty twenty has been a fuck of a year, uh, <laughs> but as is tradition, um, we like to get together the three of us at the end of the year, sometime in in middle to late. December and discuss the year that has just passed and this year is no different. Um, so we took a uh, spreadsheet and uh, filled in some categories here on uh, some highlights, some low lights, things like that of 2020. And um, let's uh, let's go around the room here with best movie. Uh, uh, Richard, what was your uh... real quick? Uh... A Rainer in the chat says Bezos' wife just gave away billions she got out of their settlement, which is mm. true. I believe she joined the pact yes. with uh, with Gates and uh, Buffett, 
where their entire fortunes will be going to charities when they die. And she's already begun the, uh, the, the process by giving away a large part of what she currently has yes, to the, that the is selected true. charities. Like she's, that is true. She's already doing more for the world than Bezos has ever done. Right. Very cool. How crazy insane is that is also, uh, by, by the way, I, I believe this is probably Tony and I am glad to see in the chat. Thank you. Very cool. Richard, what, what was your favorite movie? What was the best movie of 2020? Yeah. So, you know, I, I said that we would be back to this when we talked about you being in the theater for one and only one movie this year, we did not really get into the theaters for movies. And I didn't mm. either. I don't usually get into the theater. I usually only get in for really big blockbuster films like star Wars and star Wars and, <laughs> and uh, James bonds and stuff like that. But my, absolute favorite movie the thing that i loved and that i recommend to everybody i know that i watched this year and i think i say it that way because that's when it was available to us this year was mm -hmm. jojo rabbit i thought it was brilliant this is a taika watiti property he is in it he is mm -hmm. absolutely brilliant and this film comes at you in ways you just don't expect. It's mm -hmm. a comedy about the Hitler youth. Like, seriously, how could that be funny? It is. It's wonderful. And it's endearing. It very, very much. I mean, this that movie, like, you will go through pretty much the entire spectrum of emotion watching this movie. Like, I cried at one point in the movie um it it's it's great have you seen it amos i have not it's it's on my list um but i had heard that there were some themes in it that i might not be very comfortable with so uh, and now it's so far hmm. removed that i don't remember what those themes might have been but it had given me a second pause and i was waiting for an, another um like another I... recommendation yeah, yeah, I think you. This would is like it. I think this is like that. Oh, oh, by the way, psst, it's on my server. Uh, right, it's <laughs> it's on mine as well. I just haven't watched it. Because... <laughs> yeah. The most fun I had watching a movie though this year was Bill and Ted Face the Music. Nice. Uh, that was just a just a romp. I mean, it was, it was uh, just a nostalgia fest because, you know, I, we grew up watching Bill and Ted. Well, I say grew up. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I guess I was technically a kid when Bill and Ted uh, one and two came out. Um, yeah. So it was just, it was great. It, it brought, um, you know, some new, new story elements and things. It wasn't just a rehash of what they'd done before, uh, but there was a lot of familiarity, you know, old characters and, and some similar situations, time travel and whatnot. Um, it was a lot of fun, and uh, we, um, along with another couple, we set up a projector in the backyard and and watched it outdoors on a on a big screen. So that was fun. That's so cool. Nice. I know a ton of people that have done that actually, that have done <clears throat> the whole outdoor theater thing, so that they can spend time with other people and enjoy movies. Like, oh, remember we used to? Yeah. 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 All right. Um. For. For my favorite movie, I'm going to uh, come out with... Uh... One. You get one. There are two here. You get one. <laughs> so, my favorite... Uh... You have to pick one. Are we going I by... Two. Are, 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 are we going by U.S.? I have two, are we going I by... I would pick one on the spot. Are, are we going by U.S. release date or release date in general? That's my question. doesn't matter. It this does year, matter. What, what did you like the most this year? Yeah. <laughs> then it has to be parasite All okay right. um yeah because uh, both both of my picks were from previous years but they were they were made of widely available in the u.s in 2020 and uh parasite was just it was such a fun movie it had such a low-key introduction like like 90 percent of the movie is an introduction and you really get involved with the characters. Like the character development is 
astounding. And then it chews you up and spits you out and makes you a better person for having watched it. And it's just mm. fantastic. It's such a good fucking movie. Awesome. Ken, I have, have you seen this seen yet? I haven't seen it. Um, yeah. I, I've heard really, really good things about it, but I know basically nothing about the plot or anything, uh, which that's, I, I hear is that's the way to go. It, it right. is. It is. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, it, it is a so, subtitled movie. Like you do have to read the subtitles. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I, I can say that it is totally fucking worth it. It is so worth it. Yeah. Yeah. I'll check that out. I have a funny feeling that my Christmas day is going to be watching. Parasite and Tenet. A am I going to just be like completely, I, I, I don't know, turning my brain to mush? <laughs> have you not seen Parasite? I have not yet. Oh, and I haven't seen Tenet either, but it's, again, it's <laughs> it's on my server. Right, um, yeah. It's, a, it's another, it's a Chris Nolan property, which inherently fucks with your brain. Right. If, if Tenet is anything like, um, anything of the of the ilk of Parasite, it uh, means I'm going to be watching it tomorrow night. Mm. Like, <laughs> okay, it's on my server. <laughs> Same. Um, Amos, you yeah, and can't, I the they're both on show. our servers. They're both on both our servers. Like, you have no excuse for not watching it. You don't even need a <laughs> you don't even need a right? Walgreens red box to watch it. Like, we have it. We got you covered, homie. <laughs> <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> So as far as best TV shows, Amos, uh, you and I picked the same thing, and yep. I don't think we need to say a whole lot about them because um, we, already did. we discussed it already. Yeah. Mandalorian Season 2 made both of our lists. Yep. Uh, Richard, what, what was your uh, best TV show of 2020? Wait, you don't even want to talk about it? Like, seriously? We, we, well, I mean, we can, re we, can, we can go back. We can talk more about it. I, I figured we, we covered the, the topic earlier. All right. That's cool. I, I mean, I have no problem talking, so I'm happy to fill <laughs> this particular segment. <sighs> My favorite TV show, and it's hard for me to talk about this without getting a little bit choked up, actually, was Ted Lasso mm. on Apple TV+. Plus. This show, in, in my opinion, this show helped, like, make my year bearable. Mm. This show makes you feel so fucking good. This show does what I have never seen any other entertainment property do to help lift people up and help them understand the value of the contribution that they bring to the people around them. I can't recommend this enough. This is the show that I feel like the world needed this year. I've watched it through twice mm. and it's only been out for like six months. Mm -hmm. I love this thing. 10 episodes. It is wonderful. It is not for kids. It is absolutely not for kids. This is a show meant for adults. It's on Apple TV plus the damn free trial if you don't already have it it's easy enough to get this is the first thing you should watch it is amazing i will say that of, of all the shows that like most of the, most of what i see on twitter which is my primary social media is people trying not to spoil something that happened on either mandalorian or you know something else right no one ever worries about spoiling ted lasso because they have no desire to. They're just singing its praises and, and asking like existential questions like, why didn't I realize this before? You know? Right. And yeah, I, I, it's been a, my, my Ted Lasso experience, having not seen it, just read what, what people I follow post on Twitter has been uh, different than any other show I've ever watched. It, it's not mm. about spoiling. There's nothing to spoil. It's just, it's pure, unadulterated, wonderful. I, I just, don't know how to describe it. I, you, you have to, you have to see this show. It will make you feel so good. Seriously, very few shows impact me the way this has emotionally. I just, I, I don't know how they pulled it off, but I can't wait for the next season. So, hmm. Cinemagasm goes to Ted Lasso. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right on. All right, Amos. What was your best gadget of the year? I took a chance 
on a gadget that every review said was dumb. Everyone said oh, yeah. you should not totally be wrong. getting this. It's crap. Uh, it doesn't do what it intends to do. And maybe what? I just bought it like long after everybody else had already messed with it and it, it fixed some things. I have the Philips Hue Sync HDMI hooked up in my living room. I have eight lights hooked, well, 10 lights hooked up to it, two behind the TV facing out and f uh, eight on the ceiling and different, uh, regularly spaced around the ceiling. Uh, this is a device that interferes, uh, that, that, uh, I don't want to say interferes, it intercepts your HDMI inputs and then sends an HDMI output to your TV, takes that HDMI signal, and based on where light is and what color that light is and the brightness of that light on the image you are seeing, adjust the lights, the hue lights in the room to synchronize and match the environment that you're watching on the TV. Mm. It sounds gimmicky. The YouTube videos do not do it justice, which is why I haven't tried to do one covering it. But if you have the proper setup of living room where your lights are kind of evenly distributed and you can get the little light bars that go behind the TV and shine out from it, it's fucking amazing. And when you're yeah. watching The Mandalorian and it does the intro screen and it's all black and then the last helmet that pops up has the red thing come across it and your lights flicker red from one side to the other instantaneously, it just sets the mood. And just watching cartoons or anything else, like it just makes the ambiance of your room so involved. Like It increases your, your, your in involvement in the movie or the TV show that you're watching. Um, I don't do it for everything. I haven't done it for video games, for example. What? Uh, well, I don't play video games on my TV. I would play those in my, in okay. here in my office, which I don't have the light okay. set up. Um, but it, and it's not cheap. It is not. It's no. it's a complete passion project. Like if you oh yeah really into the shit and you have the most of the stuff anyway. Like you were there's two thousand dollars in fucking Hue equipment in my living room to make this happen. But it's Good fucking Lord. phenomenal. I wouldn't say two thousand. Just to be clear, this does not cost two thousand dollars. So, it, it, so quiz for, uh, quiz for y'all. How much do you think that it costs to buy a Hue Sync right now? If you were to go onto Amazon, well, you got three seconds to answer, so you can't actually uh, query it. Two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. MSRP is two twenty five, I believe. Two twenty nine. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so it's uh, for something if you want to get it right now. Oh, really? Yeah, they are sold out. They are sold mm. out. So we're now dealing with scalpers selling wow. this thing because you cannot get it in time for the end of the year. It it makes mm. it makes my fifty five inch TV feel almost like a movie theater. Yeah, it's this is brilliant technology. This is what this is what Philips was trying to do years ago with mm -hmm. televisions that in fact had lights on the back of them yes. that projected the the color of the images on the screen and everybody thought it was a gimmick. Yep. Now everybody's like, oh my God, this is so fucking cool. I have to get this. Because now you can make your entire room look like what you're doing and you map what light is where. Yep. So it specifically knows that, okay, it turns out that Anthony has like 57 lights in his office area. And when he has the TV on, then we need to map these this way so that when the red light goes from the left to the right, turn these on. It does all of that. It's brilliant. It's just way too expensive. 229 it has never come down in price except for the occasional sale for like thirty or forty bucks. Yeah, the I cheapest I've ever seen is one ninety nine, so which is when I bought it. it was one ninety nine. Yeah, I want one of these so bad, and I can't get it now. I like this yeah. is what I wanted Edward to give me for Christmas, and it's not available in any store anywhere. Um, so uh, let me clarify. I have the the two hundred, uh, another hundred. So it's three, uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I got about you can. I got about nine hundred dollars in my living room for the for the Hue light setup overall. Not including the Hue sink. No, that, that's the that, lights. Yeah, that that yeah. I mean, roughly, we're talking rough numbers. 
Um, right. But certain things, like, and you don't notice this unless you're specifically paying attention to it. When there's an explosion on the screen, immediately the lights coming out from the side <laughs> glow bright orange. Right. And then the bright orange glow will actually travel through the room, through the other lights. Yeah. It's, I, it's I really so fucking bad. phenomenal. I want this so bad, I just can't bring myself to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> Le- well, I mean, luckily, I, most of the lights I had gotten on on a, 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 a sale, oh, was it par- Prime Day last year? And I kind of had them sitting around. And then when Best Buy had the had it, you know, 30 bucks off for $199, I picked that up, and then I kind of picked up the bars, thinking if they didn't work in the in the living room, I could put them in here and use them as part of my setup in here. Uh, and they they just they it just works, man. It's if you are into theater, uh, th- theater watching, but you don't have an eighty five inch TV, this is cheap. This is more expensive than an eighty five inch TV, probably, but it's still it's fucking phenomenal. That's my That's gadget awesome. of the year. I love it. Dude, we yeah. totally need to do like a catch up smart home episode at some point. Oh yeah, because I've kind of gone crazy since last time I was on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've I've upgraded stuff that I was only considering when I was on your show. <laughs> oh, I know. So I've been listening. So Sassy in the in the Twitch chat says that honestly just sounds anxiety inducing. Uh, talking about Hugh Sink. Uh no no, it it, no. it the hardest part about it is is setting it up, which took all of twenty minutes to make sure the names were correct, so I knew which light it was talking about. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's more my OCD than the actual setup process. And now, I mean, you you don't have to turn on; it's an option on your phone. You can either turn on there or not, just leave it off. Yeah, but most I, of the time I, it's off. Well, I think she's talking about the effect, like the um, like how you're just completely like engulfed in the. In no, the media. It, it's awesome. Yeah. It's like it's like when it's you like go to the, the movies and when something big at the movies happens, the entire room kind of lights up. But that's from the projection on the screen. That's what's happening in your room. You mm-hmm. don't get that when you're just watching a TV. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So my uh, my gadget of the year is the At Games Legends Ultimate arcade system. Least surprising um, thing on this entire spreadsheet, by the way. um i mean it's a it's a full-sized uh just full up fully functional arcade machine that can play basically any game period um it's freaking amazing it's so much fun um it's just it's just great i can't uh i can't really say anything bad about it it's 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 fantastic and richard you don't have a Kent, gadget on here. Ken, I, I, I'm just curious. I mean, he took like, I don't know, 10 minutes to talk about his Hugh Sink. You don't want to <sighs> gloat a little bit more? Well, I mean, if you want to, uh, if you want to see what this is, well, actually, shoot, I don't know that I have, oh, I haven't uploaded them to YouTube. Uh, um, you haven't uploaded anything to anywhere like all year. <laughs> Yeah. So, all right. Well, coming soon, you will be able to watch me play it uh, from the live recordings that I did uh, earlier. Soon, um, soon on the cosmic scale. On yeah, well, for sure on the cosmic <laughs> scale. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. No, it's 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 a blast. All right. Did you not so, have a? Yeah. No, I do. I do. Oh, I was. I was kind of like waiting until the last minute because I was conflicted. I have, Mm. you know, I'm a gadget geek. So what is going to be my best gadget Mm -hmm. this year? My, my best gadget is something kind of weird. So I ended up buying a bunch of radio controlled, like remote controlled shades for my breakfast room. Hmm. My breakfast room is all windows. Mm. It like extends off the the kitchen and it's amazing because it looks out over the river. So basically His, this this is our view in the house. Let let me clarify. When he says <laughs> the breakfast room is all windows, he's not talking about all external walls are window laden. There are no walls 
anywhere in <laughs> right. the breakfast room above knee height. Everything's windows. The the living room windows right. show into the breakfast room. The breakfast windows show into the onto the river. Like you can see straight from the living room out through the breakfast room to the river. It's <laughs> it's literally wall of windows times four. It, it is a wall of windows. It's and fantastic it's, in the mornings it, too, which is why it's his breakfast room. <laughs> it's even more complicated by the fact that it's it's kind of like this. Um, it's not octagonal. It's like this twelve-sided room, but only two sides face, or only six of those twelve sides face the exterior. So we had to figure out, okay, well, how do we deal with the fact that the sun comes in and it's crazy during the year, and it gets hot in here, but we really want to be able to look out on this view that we paid for when we bought this house. Yeah. So we ended up finding this place where we could get these cheap, uh, cheap is not the word, relatively inexpensive shades that you could see through. They're like these rubberized kind of uh, product shades that you could be able to actually, they, like they're like a weave basically. And the weave is such that you can see through it if there's enough light. So we bought a bunch of those shades, put them on the windows, and we bought them with motors. And they have an, like a little RF controller, radio frequency controller that comes with them. So that is the setup. That's not the product. <laughs> the, all right? The, the gadget of the year is this thing called the Bond bridge and i cannot recommend this enough this company has created a device that allows your home your like your smart home products whether it be your like amazon assistant based services or google home or whatever or smart things anything that you have to be able to control anything in your home that's RF controlled. Oh. Whether hmm. it's shades or whether it's a ceiling fan or an air conditioner or hmm. a remote control fireplace, all of these typical things use RF as the way of controlling it. And what this device does is just like smart remotes that learn the infrared code, mm -hmm. this thing learns the radio frequency code of your devices and then projects it on demand. Mm. Kent, tell me if I'm wrong, but this sounds like the Palm 3XE, like the final <laughs> thing that that did, the RF blaster that nothing else yep. was doing. It sounds like the the the... Palm 3XE has finally been washed away with technology. <laughs> finally, yeah. it's about damn time. I, I know, but and... that was just it. Like you had all these, all these, you know, smartphones and iPhones and Apple Android phones and everything else, but you never had anything that had an RF blaster that was useful. Granted, the Palm 3XE's RF blaster was only really useful for changing channels in a waiting room, but <laughs> I mean, that's what I used it for anyway. <laughs> I'm tired of kids' shows. Boop, boop, boop. Oh, there's ESPN. Imagine that. I don't know what <laughs> happened. Nobody has the remote. It's over there. Who changed it? I don't know. <laughs> but now I'm watching the game. <laughs> yeah. No, th yeah, this no that device is, sounds pretty great. Yeah, it is so cool. So it basically allowed me to take these off-the-shelf RF remotes that have this like proprietary remote, but you buy a proprietary RF remote for something, more or less, they're all on the same frequency. And it can figure out what frequency and then recreate that and send that signal so that you can have your your Google or your Amazon assistant automatically send that when you tell it to or tie it into smart things or whatever else. It's so cool. I am I, I love this device. It's called the... Bond Bridge. I can't recommend it enough. 
That's awesome. Nice. I, I really wish we had more uh, Babel projects like that. Things that would translate and allow, like, uh, Apple and Google and Amazon all joined a consortium that was supposed to enable us to have, you know, a, a, a unified interface for all of our devices. So you don't have to worry about if, right. if a smart device is, is HomeKit or Echo enabled or whatever. The right verb isn't was, it's is. That that is is intended, right? But but it hasn't like nothing's no, no progress. Like the intent came out, and then we heard nothing for six months. Uh, maybe they're all working together still, but as far as the consumer in me, I'm just like, well, that was that was a great idea, guys. You know, but um, I'm still waiting for for that to happen, and everything that yep. brings us closer to that, whether it's crossing bridges we didn't know needed to cross like rf you know or getting uh, google home to talk to uh, the amazon voice assistant talk to HomeKit, like all of that just needs it i i understand the marketing aspect of it but anytime you can bring any of those together please make that happen just yeah simplify my geekhood a little <laughs> bit because fuck totally. it's complicated out here <laughs> right yeah. Um, all right. Let's move on to personal moment. Amos, what's something that uh, that happened this year that's personal to you? Um, right at the end of my summer hiatus, I moved the twins down to Tacoma, and they're back here now. And I gotta say, man, home has never felt so home as it has mm. the last almost week that they've been home. Like it's mm. it's kind of crazy. Uh, he, Huge event, huge event for them, huge event for me, huge event as a stepdad, like to, to take the kids and have to set them up and then have my wife follow them directly behind me and basically judge everything that I did, <laughs> you know, the money I spent and the manner in which I handled situations. It was, it was kind of a, 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 a life assessment almost. And I don't know how well I passed. It was kind of a pass fail thing and I passed. So I might have passed with like <laughs> the minimum points required, but I passed. And oh, uh, yeah, yeah just th for a personal moment, that was a huge one. You know, moving kids out of the house that that I've been with since they were tiny, you know. And uh, yeah, it was the next evolution of the family. And it was really weird. Mm -hmm. And it it's pretty phenomenal. It's great to have them back in the house, though. Man, it's so good to have them back in the house. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, I think the, the biggest moment that stood out for me this year was uh, the start of the pandemic. I was actually, well, I say the start of the pandemic. When, when it like became real for me, um, I was actually in Austin. And um, it was the, I think the second day I was there, I was waiting on Curtis uh, to, to come uh, from the airport uh, to meet at the hotel. And I was across the street at a bar uh, getting some food and having a beer, watching. Um, I was watching the NCAA championship, or or the uh, not the championship game because they didn't get that far, but uh, watching the tournament, the uh, March Madness tournament. And uh, I learned two things while I was sitting there. I learned that Tom Hanks had COVID, and I learned that they were canceling the NCAA tournament and probably all sports were going to be canceled because of this pandemic. And that's when it was like, oh fuck. Like this is this is a real thing. Yeah. And it was interesting. I was I, I was in Austin for a few more days after that. And it was interesting to watch like the like the systematic shutdown basically. Like the transition from you know you, well you know how Austin is, especially on Sixth Street. Like it's just craziness. People everywhere everybody's partying it's just nuts right and then like the next day was like half the people weren't out and then like the next day everywhere you went smelled like a hospital because of so much wow. disinfectant and wow and then like the next day you started to see like masks and things and and businesses actually shutting down and it was like holy shit so i actually changed my flight to leave early <laughs> They're like, I don't want to be here anymore. I need to go home. Sassian in chat reminds you that you relearned that your girlfriend could not handle shit. 
Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I think that is perfectly fair. It freaked me out that you went anyway. We were all supposed to be there. We we canceled. You decided to go. It fucking freaked me out. I was so stressed out well, that you were there. Richard's I was so worried that you were there. Richard's mm. canceling was the final nail in me canceling. Because yeah. I was still willing well, to take the trip if Richard and Kathy were going to be there. But when they, the, like, mm-hmm. as soon as I found out they canceled, I texted you and said, I'm out. Like, yeah. It was well, almost worth, immediate. I had to, I, I basically had to say to Kathy, like, I can't do it. I just can't. I don't think this is the right thing to do. And then mm-hmm. we both agreed, okay, we'll cancel. She, like, we wanted to do it. We really wanted to do it. And we couldn't. I just, it was, it just felt like something was way worse than we thought it possibly was. Yeah. And it was. Mm -hmm. And, and financially we got, you know, we got screwed over. Um, the, a lot of people who invested a ton and I don't want this to go unsaid because I think that this is important. A lot of people who invested in going to South by and who had paid for hotels through the South by system. Like they were registrants of South by and they paid for hotels through that system, got fucked over by the hotels that supported that conference because Mm -hmm. they did not reimburse them. They did not give them credits. They fucked them over and they said, Oh, Sorry, the governor says we're still allowed to have guests here. Uh-huh. That's messed up. That is totally messed up. They all knew that it was wrong. They all knew that they should have reimbursed people. I got my money back because I fought it through my credit card. I know there are thousands of people who lost thousands of dollars in uh-huh. deposits that it's just it's ridiculous yep yeah it, the whole situation was just awful all right so sorry bring us back two. up richard bring us back up hey yeah, yeah. Uh, what was your person <laughs> let's talk about something good that happened this year and that for me the thing that was amazing for me is that i started working again like so when when my company that i was working for folded I stayed on until the last minute. I was literally the last man standing and and closed the virtual door for the company as an employee other than the executives that were in place. And when I did that, I figured, all right, well, I'll continue to work and provide the type of support that I do as an independent contractor. And I did that for a couple of years. And this past year, I had the opportunity to work with a previous client that needed services beyond what I could provide on my own. And as a result, what that caused is me to reach out to old colleagues that I used to work with, people that I revere and have uh, like so much respect for and love and have partied with and know what their weaknesses and their strengths are. And we decided, all right, uh, we are going to pitch to this client that we're going to work together and provide them with the solution that they need. And we did that this year and it was wonderful. And it was so successful that, that we are continuing to work with them into next year. And I'm just so happy about that. I can't even begin to express yeah. that. Like this is this year has been a friggin' dumpster fire for so many friggin' people. And mm-hmm. this made my professional life and my day to day life so amazing. That's that's great. And you know, I've this year, you're you're absolutely right. Has been just terrible for so many people, uh, losing jobs and and things like that. And I'm really thankful that I've got a job. Like I've got job security, right? Like 
it doesn't matter if we're in a pandemic, like I'm, I'm going to have my job. Like I'm not going to go out of business. So that's, that's something I've been really thankful for this year. And I'm, I'm really glad to hear that you're having such, such success as well. Um, it's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's been hard for so many people. And, and for the most part, I think that people are, are, you know, you have your, your norm, you have your pandemic thing, but you also have this thing where, where for the most part, not everybody is used to dealing with having to work in these different conditions. Mm -hmm. And that's been so hard for so many. Yeah, All right. for sure. Well, let's move on. So I think you, you wanted to talk about things that made you go, Hmm. Yeah. Um, in the scientific realm, thought, things that, that like, wow, that's pretty cool. Um, so I was reading about the the vaccine and how the vaccine was developed because, uh, man, like it happened so fast. Like we've never seen a vaccine go from um, statement of need to being injected into the public <laughs> like this fast. It's less than a year. It's insane. Uh, but it turns out that the the technology that they used is way different than what they used. What you know, what they've used for like you know flu vaccine and measles vaccine and stuff like that. It's way different, and it's um, it's been a while since I read this now, so I don't remember all the nomenclature and everything. But they're basically it's these it uses these um, cells that can like basically become what they need to become to fight what they need to fight kind of thing. Right. Uh, whereas before, like this, a traditional vaccine is basically just like a like a dead version of a virus, right. basically. Um, so the reason that they were able to to get this out so fast is it's kind of a, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Kind of like a template that they've already kind of had um, uh, in development so that it, when you discover a new disease that requires a vaccine, you basically just modify that template to the to this disease. And... That's why we were able to get it out so fast, and that's that, that absolutely am amazed me. Yeah, uh, that we were able to do that. Yeah, I'll, and uh, go, ahead. go ahead. I was gonna say <laughs> a, a large large part of that was the fact that we had a huge breakthrough, and I don't know the details about this, um, but we had a huge break breakthrough in protein folding this year uh, that mm. allowed us to better simulate how proteins fold and what shapes they take, and and how to match up with those shapes in order to form things like like effective um, uh, antivirals and things like that. Like that, that happened in like June of this year at a time when we probably really fucking needed it the most. Right. Mm. Yeah. A and like, there, there's so many ends with this, like this, this <laughs> all the, all the things fell in line with this and how often does that happen? So we have to, we have to pat everybody on the back on this because like it, it, usually you're dealing with, all the unknowns and for the most part they had the 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 benefit of all these things working together the way they expected them to not only did they have all of this new technology with rna the the, the ability to to create these things that could go into your body to help your body learn how to fight this thing and to instead of injecting your body with stuff that was this thing and let it figure it out on its own. But they also invested, and this is probably the only time I'm ever going to say anything positive about the Trump administration, but one of the brilliant things about the way that they approached this with, I, 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 I always forget the name of the term that they used for the warp speed. Warp speed. That's, they call this yeah. warp speed was that everywhere in the process, when you have a workflow that has dependencies, the way that that the, the way that those things play out in real life is that you get the thing where everything has gone through the last step that they need to go through. So if you have four processes that have to happen to success before you proceed with the next one, because otherwise it's financially irresponsible, then 
you're going to end up having to wait for all of that stuff to happen successfully before you get success on the end. What Warp Speed did was they said, all right, as soon as we get the first step that says that this looks like it might be viable and then we'll go test it, they started with the next step. And as soon as they got that next step to the point that they said, all right, this looks like it's going to be financially, or this looks like it's going to be possible. Let's start with whatever we need to do to make that next step happen. And they added into that process all of the risk, the financial risk assumed. And the government basically said, we'll assume that risk for you. Yep. So that you can make that possible. We'll take that risk on and you should produce this thing even if we don't know it's viable yet. And mm -hmm. it worked. And it fucking worked out. And that's insanely brilliant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, being able to start step two before you fully fleshed out step one. Right. It like So you have, instead of a concurrent pro or a, uh, a, a consecutive process, you have several concurrent processes and whenever they fall off okay that's not going to work they just drop it but they've still already got three or four others going along their their process you know being able to do parallel processes like that is it's just it's like what we would hope would work but as you said it's just not financially feasible and I mean, not that Pfizer can't afford it but you know Purdue can't afford it but uh, but you know they the government came through and said no, don't worry about that. We'll we'll get that. Just keep doing pressing as hard as you can for it. And it's it, like I said, it's like the one good thing that the Trump administration actually managed to squeeze out of a uh, you know a truckload of shit. <laughs> yeah, it was brilliant, and yeah. and I think this will actually change the way that we approach medicine. The other thing that's worth mentioning here is that they. They, um, I don't want to say benefited from because that doesn't give it the credit that is it deserves, but they were able to leverage work that happened on virus, uh, uh, um, what's the word, virus research after prior COVID events. So, this is COVID 19, that doesn't mean that it occurred. Like this is, you know, that that this is the one, the 19th version, but it is the it's, it's not like, the first, not the first one. Right. right? In, in fact, the official name is is SARS COVID-2 or something like that. Like it's yeah, SARS it, COV-2. Yeah, yeah. It, it's actual like medical name is a sequential of SARS. So right. we've so got prior, tons of research on it, exactly. and they were able to build upon that and keep going with it, yeah. Right. So prior research on SARS uh, concerns had benefited this as well, and that's awesome. Like, that's complete. And I am blown away by the science that got us to where we are because as everybody is saying, oh, we'll have to lock down for a month back in fucking March. Right. <laughs> Right. Like, Which if we had reality, locked down for a month, that's all we would have had to have locked right. down. And we'd be back to fucking normal. <laughs> well, if eight we had months locked ago. down and allowed people to stay locked down. But yeah. Uh, but the, what what's amazing about this is that like this gets us beyond what anybody ever thought was possible because of prior research. And I love that. Yeah. And it's it's yeah, it's just it's so. I, I don't know. I'm very happy that it came through. I wish it'd come through faster, but of course that's the wishful thinking of humankind. You know, like it's still pretty amazing that it actually came through as quick as it did. I think it's physically impossible for it to have come through. Like, like I, I do not support this administration in any fashion whatsoever. Everything that they did, I don't think this could have happened faster than it did. I don't, I don't know. You say fashion, and I think fascism. Faster, faster, so. <laughs> faster, faster. I didn't face fash, faster. Okay, you should go next so that uh, Kent doesn't have to talk. Right. Uh, my big thing this year was the Comet Two I Borisov. Yes. A comet yes. coming from outside of our solar system. 
and breezing by close enough to Earth that we could actually get good pictures and send, you know, satellites out to and, and probes and everything else. Like, it, I mean, you talk about our solar system not is the tiny speck in the grand universe. It's a tiny speck in just like our galaxy, you know, which is, by the way, uh, a thousand light years closer to Sagittarius A black hole than we previously thought, but whatever. I This was the first interstellar object coming from outside of our solar system, coming close enough that we could A, detect it, and B, study it. Not just, oh, that's something, you know, like it's just, it's phenomenal. And it makes it to where, I mean, granted, my cynical mind says, yeah, they could be lying to us. But if they're not, this is the first time we've actually confirmed, hey, our solar system isn't isn't just us. You know, it's all this other stuff going on around us. Why, what, what would make you think that anyone's lying to us about a, like, a comet? Or you, you think that there's a larger lie? Uh, okay, another show. Never mind. <laughs> This was this was one of several near Earth objects, near Earth um, uh, uh, orbitals that that came through this year alone, and yes. this to me was the one that was like really made me think yes. about the cosmos in okay. general. All right, I, I do have something here, even though I don't have it on our worksheet, and that is that, and there have been studies working on this for years, trying to figure this out. But there was evidence this year that there is not only water on the moon, on the dark side of the moon, yep. where there is ice under the surface that hasn't seen light, but in fact that they believe they can extract water from the surface of the moon on the not dark side of the moon, <laughs> which is huge yeah. when it comes to figuring out how do you create an environment if we're going to the moon where we can have the the resources that we need to build and sustain life. Right, right. Um, because if you can only build on the dark side of the moon to be able to extract water from there, you can't then utilize solar power to create electricity or to right. to work on uh, uh, chloris, uh, uh, whatever the plant life thing is. Photosynthesis. I kept thinking of chlor Yeah, thinking, I, was, I was mashing chlorophyll and photosynthesis yep. together. Um, y y if you're on the dark side of the moon where there you don't have sunlight – and you can extract water, but you can't use the solar power, the ambient solar power. That's that's no bueno. But now that now that there's a possibility <laughs> of doing both, of using solar power and using the available water on the surface, or at least near surface, of the light side of the moon, it kind of really, you know, by an order of magnitude, increases the survivability chances of yeah. a colony or at least a an ex, you know, uh, 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 an outpost of some sort on the moon. Right. And, and I mean, the, the important thing is it dramatically reduces the, the resources that we need to send with the astronauts to the moon. If we need to send them with the resources to be able to either extract or sorry, to, to convert or produce water or to carry water with what they already have, then that's far more expensive and far more difficult than if we can send them there knowing that, all right, there's a possibility we can extract water from the, the surface. So we, we can provide you with this much water. Mm -hmm. And you know what? If that doesn't work, we can bring it back. But in the meantime, you might be able to get more water. And yep. that alone is what we need to know to be able to sustain life there. And by the way, water 
contains, and I'm, I'm assuming this would be true on the moon as well, it contain, contains other gases, other nutrients dissolved within the water and is two-thirds oxygen, which last time I checked, kind of necessary for, <laughs> for all life we know of on planet Earth. And Rich is muted again. Uh, yeah, sorry. I was I was like other minerals. I mean, it needs definitely oxygen and hydrogen. So, and those are both important, right? But I mean, you you also have have typically on Earth anyway. You have dissolved nitrogen and nitrous compounds. You have other salts and things like that that are dissolved in in water that can be extracted and used for things. Right. I don't know how efficient or or cost effective, not necessarily monetary cost, but just you know, overall cost effective that would be, but at least it's there, which again, just opens those possibilities. It makes it a, a more of a probability and less of a abstract idea that we could maybe have some sort of outpost on the planet or on the, on the surface of the moon. Yep. Mm. Yeah. And it, it'd be much easier to, to explore the, like the rest of the galaxy from the moon than than taking off from earth so oh, if we're right, going to establish right. a base like a sustainable base cuz you're you're dealing with uh, one sixth of the gravity with and you don't have any of the atmospheric forces yep. acting upon it. it it just yeah it it's the chaos effect where everything just kind of kind of grows very quickly from the possibility of there being usable water on the light side right. of our moon that's pretty yep. pretty totally. pretty exciting all right, Amos, what was your most WTF moment of the year? <laughs> if you can pick just one. <laughs> I'm going to pick yeah. one. I'm, I'm, I'm picking two, but they're so interlinked that they're basically the same thing. Uh, sorry, I thought that maybe there might be 365 of them. Uh, <laughs> right. Well, if that's the case, then it's my most what the fuck moment of the last four years. So, um, The impeachment of Donald Trump ending with only one senator from the GOP, from the Republicans, voting against Trump in only one charge when both of them seem very well laid out and would only have been enhanced by further evidence, which the GOP itself denied uh, uh, Senate mm -hmm. hearings on. It, it, it just, the whole impeachment felt like a crushing blow to not democracy in general, but specifically our democratic republic. Mm. And mm. it kind of it, it kind of makes the entire impeachment process that we have here, which is a safeguard against, you know, tyranny and fascism and everything else at the highest office, really feel completely out of date, out of touch, and unusable. Mm. Yeah. This is the so, third impeachment we've had in our nation and it's the third failure to impeach. And that I think that really ooh, says something. That's actually really interesting. That's, yeah, we've we've never removed a president. We we've re, we've removed more presidents from threat of impeachment than we have actual impeachment. Well, sure. Sure. By yep. one. But, actually removed through process has not occurred right no at all it's it's, it's one zero we've threatened one of them and he left and we threatened <laughs> three others actually did it and none of them left like right yeah nixon must feel like shit now because apparently it's a fucking broken process and he just gave up he did the right thing he well <laughs> he's right he's like right like he's the one the one person in that position that did the right thing and and it's interesting that he is held up as the example time and time and time again over the last four years. Mm. Yeah. So, uh, Kent, I know you can't talk about this tremendously. I do have thoughts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, by all means, go for it. So... Uh, Richard, don't read the script Kent gave you. Actually, consider things from your own mind. <laughs> That's good. Uh, so, I'm this. 
this saddens me so much. I can't even begin to express. I, I know our country is so divided right now, and it, I know everybody is angry. We we went through the impeachment process with so much anger and vitriol and and hatred and accusation, and it what what occurred to me is that there there's an inability for whatever reason for people from the different parties on the different sides to communicate together in what seems to be a reasonable matter and a reasonable means and i think it's easy for people to say that oh republicans suck or you know uh the democrats are all fat are all um uh, socialists and it, it's so much more nuanced than that i think the the thing that i'm concerned about is that this impeachment well i feel like it was the right thing to do because i do believe that he broke the law and should have been held accountable for it what i what i think is that we need to figure out how to better communicate. Like we need to figure out how to work together better and, and understand what is the right thing for our country. And for whatever reason right now, the Republican and democratic parties can't do that. And that's just messed up and that needs to mm -hmm. change. And I think this helped people see that that was the case. What what hasn't happened is it hasn't in any way helped us figure out how to get to a point where we can work together better. Yeah. Yeah. And that, I mean, and that leads right into what I wrote down. I put death of objective truth, which is uh, basically what you're talking about is this lack of communication. The half of the country believes one set of facts and the other half of the country believes a separate set of facts and thinks that the other side is just fucking stupid and has no idea what reality is. It's like a complete, it's almost a 50 50 split on, on that. And that is, uh, that is unacceptable because there are people in power, um, not just the president, um, but a lot of people in power that, not only enable this, but uh, uh, they're, they're propagate like they are the 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 creators of this like chaos. Yeah. I guess like they're the ones knowing that something isn't true will just fucking say it anyway, and then hold to and then double down when they're challenged on it, and then and you've got full, a full fifty percent of the nation that just believes what they said regardless of any objective evidence and it's just we, yeah we we cannot get anything done we cannot move forward when we're in this state of just it, it it's chaos it's ridiculous it is but when when i realize i don't remember the like um i don't know if i had like an epiphany moment but like when i kind of realized that that's what's happening that there's like you can't argue with somebody that has that starts with different facts than you start with like that was the god, god damn it it was a uh, yeah starts with alternative facts. <sighs> yeah yeah I'll, yeah exactly alternative I mean, facts yep. you know i'm just saying yeah this this <sighs> is this is a rough this is a rough place because i know that i mean there are there are political alignments here and there there are there are reasons to believe that one group is true while the other group is lying to you. It, it is, I have to admit, I will admit full heartedly, I have close to zero patience for all of the people who are propagating what I believe to be 
crap about mm. the election being stolen and stuff like that. And and I believe that to be crap because I see that information coming from people who have uh, been largely discredited, who have who have little credibility, who have uh, basically aligned themselves with the administration and who are depending upon specific me media outlets to propagate their message. And, and that alone is probably part of the problem, right? Like we know about the whole social media problem where we're in our own windows, where we're, I'm getting one thing, you're getting another thing. Uh, I am listening to mainstream media. You're listening to non-mainstream media, which is basically Newsmax, Fox, and OAN. Mm -hmm. Like they're, and, and anything owned by Tribune. So you're, like you you have this dichotomy of information that people are getting and it's it's so hard for the average citizen who may not be able to figure this out for themselves and frankly that's what everybody's depending on that mm. is what the this whole thing is depending on is that you're going to you're going to accept the voice that that resonates with you and that that's so messed up. Okay. Uh, anyway, sorry. Let me get to my what the fuck moment, which is not surprisingly related to everybody else's, <laughs> which is Trump having all these events with literally hundreds and sometimes thousands of people on the lawn of the White House or in the White House itself, where while everybody knows that COVID is spreading rampantly, his supporters and the people in his circle continue to attend without masks, without proper precautions. And they say, oh, we're taking their temperature. Hmm. Has nobody listened to their own recommendations? Yep. Yeah. And th that that bothers, me. you know, not only is this a, just a display of stupidity, but it's also this. These are the people that we look to as examples. And right. which, again, it's like 50 percent of the country is operating differently because right. they're it's like monkey see, monkey do kind of thing. Right. Well, if the president doesn't have to do this, then why the fuck would I have to do it? You know, and so forth. Right. Um, yeah, it's, it's very, very, <laughs> very agitating. If the president does have to stay in a public hospital in a, in an open room with three other people, I shouldn't have to. <laughs> ah, touche, sir. And, and, and clearly I'll get all of the experimental <gasps> medications that he had. And a private, and a private limo ride to wave and, at my friends in the lawn. And a private limo ride and and helicopter ride uh, uh, to ensure that I don't have to endure the pain of COVID. <clears throat> yes. Yeah. Um, I'm going to continue on with that. We got historic events here, and I'm just going to say really quickly that my historic event of the year was Stacey Abrams. Mm. Yeah. I wouldn't say single-handedly, but single-mindedly. Yeah, attacking the legislative arms of Georgia and flipping that fucking state for Biden <laughs> by this, bringing I, out I the black women and getting them to vote, letting them know how important it was. And it turned out to be maybe not the decisive vote actions, but very decisive. Like when when a Republican loses Georgia, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's, it was just amazing, and Stacey Abrams deserves every bit of credit that she gets for that, and hopefully she can continue to do that in January on the 5th. Yeah. Uh, I, I almost picked this. I, I, I it, When I first wrote something in here, I had Georgia flipping, and really it comes down to Stacey Abrams. 
she's a force not to be reckoned with. Hmm. She's amazing. Hmm. She and got frankly, she got screwed out of the governorship. I think she should. I, I I can't take credit for this label, but someone on the internet at some point said she should be secretary of whatever the fuck she wants to be secretary of. <laughs> yeah, she she definitely gets it done, um, for sure. She is a workhorse. Yeah. Kent, what about you, man? Uh, um, it's pretty historic that we get a one term president <laughs> yeah that doesn't ha- happen very often it, it's, it's happened it's, a, a uh, handful of times not i mean yeah. it's happened three times in the last 50 years yeah 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 but it's the norm is that the the momentum carried by the incumbent carries um, them through is, is, re-election yeah exactly yeah. yeah typically you know right. you can't uh, uh overcome that um, particularly momentum. Like, like, isn't it usually the case that the one-term president is, oh, okay, well, they were the vice president, and, you know, it, sure, they're not going to carry on. But mm. here we have a new, a new person carrying in, and, yeah. yep, they couldn't carry it so, another... So Trump was a party flip and a one-term. Bush, 41, was the vice president and lost it on his, on his re-election. Um, the president before that was what Carter. Carter uh, was one term. Yeah, Carter was one term. That was a a flip, uh, Republican to Democrat, back to Republican. Um, Johnson technically was a one term, but he, he uh, you know, yeah, that was a that was a different. Um, yeah. yeah so <laughs> so yeah, the, like the okay for and for, we're not even carrying. We're not even counting the the like the. Uh, replacement presidents like Ford, who carried over, carried from on. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nixon. Uh, yeah, it just, it just it's it always seems like there's something big that takes on this the single term president other than forty one and his legacy was that he wasn't Reagan. Um, yeah, right, right. That's you know, but uh, but then he he had a son take over take the office just eight short years later so there's that <laughs> yeah yeah um yeah so um so along with that is the the um, record-breaking um voter turnout uh was uh that was impressive the loser that was amazing. the loser got more votes than any previous winner yep yep but by that, I assume you mean. Um, let, let, let's just votes. be really clear about this. Uh, are you saying that the loser, Donald Trump, in the last election, got more votes than the most votes by any prior winner? Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. I just and wanted po- to be clear. And about popular that. votes, not electoral votes or any of the other yeah, yeah, yeah. scandals, yeah, bullshit course, yeah. that needs to go away. Electoral votes, yeah, let's not yep. even go there. <laughs> All right. So for my historic event, I am not going political, which may be surprising to some people, but I'm back to space. And I, I would my... say it's, it's only going to be surprising if you don't return to space. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> All right. Be- because seriously, I think the most phenomenal event of this year – was us, the U.S., with our commercial partners, specifically this year through SpaceX, getting humans into space again with our own vehicles. Yeah. I I can't, like, well, I can tell you because I probably have a, a like a screen grab of it from my phone of what my heart rate was when they were launching. I was crazy excited about this i could not believe how cool this was when crew one got people out to the uh, out to space again out to the space station we have depended upon the russians and the chinese Mm -hmm. to get us into space for the last how many years 10 years because we basically marth Balled our only program, the shuttle program, that we had to get people into orbit. Yep. Um, 
I, I, I just want to... Okay, so the U.S. is launching our own astronauts from our own soil on, in our own vehicles. Like, this is an American so, enterprise making this happen. But also, in a, in a slight... slight uh, uh, give me a little room on this, but I've never even... Like, I've seen them, but I've never been in a Tesla. I can't imagine flying to fucking space <laughs> in a Tesla, which essentially <laughs> okay. is what, what, what SpaceX is doing. Because you look yes. at it, and it's a fucking Tesla inside there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So there are a couple things I want to say there. One is that for from the most part, the, the, the astronauts that I know that have flown on that, that I don't know them personally, but obviously um, – Bob and Doug, the astronauts that flew on the first crew mission, had talked about how this was like flying, and I think this was Doug's words, flying an iPhone, mm. right? Like, yeah. this was someone, th this was them in the ultimate experience in a capsule. And that was because this company SpaceX thought about how do you create an experience that isn't all about switches and knobs, but gives the astronauts what they need to do their job right. in their suits in a way that makes sense. And with today's technology, that's touchscreen technology. Mm -hmm. So if, that's if you look why it's, it's like Star Trek. Know. Yeah. Yeah. If, yeah. If, you, if you look at the, the Crew Dragon capsule and you look inside of it and then you look at, like, say, a film clip from Apollo 13. Oh, my God. Like, I don't understand how they could fly in <laughs> in in the old capsules with just switches and lights and buttons right. literally on every fucking surface you could touch. Right. How, how do you, you know, know what's important or like this? Right. <laughs> You know, yeah. uh, no, exactly. when the instruction manual says turn 180 degrees, look down, tilt your head to the right. Now bend <laughs> over at the waist and crouch oh with your God. knees. And yeah. you might find a switch somewhere down there labeled 15 tiny crazy. letters. Uh, yeah. <laughs> crazy. So crazy. So, I mean, just so much. I have so much respect for this. And yeah, this is this is a little bit weird for us but the other thing to remember is that we are like we have with our space program always depended upon contractors so don't think that oh okay we had some third party build this for us yeah that's the same thing as the apollo 11 that got us to the moon we depended on a third party to get us there yeah not mm -hmm. anymore it's just amazing. Um, Sovereign Bohemian in the chat asked uh, if it was Bob and Doug McKenzie. Oh, my God. In, in which so, case, I just want to know if they were flying a flying toque. All fucking week long. <laughs> I was playing that song. <laughs> it's the best like, Christmas song. Take off! It, I, all fucking week long, I was playing that song. And the fact that it never finishes is just great. Like, it's just, it's like they're just like, yeah, yeah, we're just going to wrap this up because. Oh, my God. Okay. Da, 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 um, da, da, da. <laughs> personal podcasting milestone. Uh, I didn't put anything because this entire year has just been such an absolute and impossible to comprehend blur as far ah. as. Mm podcasting and, and and just everything it's just like i had a little summer high semi hiatus where it started out with trying to do fulfill a contract and ended up just me having a mental breakdown and barely surviving in a non-reclusive way for four months like like that was my summer plus covid was going on you know like that, that that's that's where i was at so like my year just 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 still podcasting right now is kind of my milestone. Like the fact that I'm podcasting mm. on December 23rd after the fucking year that I've had. And I'm not saying it was particularly hard. It was just difficult for me. 
And mm. the fact that I'm still podcasting is its own milestone. All right. Yeah, uh, I'm, I put RMP Extra, which is uh, what I named the shows that I did over your summer hiatus where I was experimenting with different things like arcade streams and yeah. uh, things like that. And um, that's, um, that's really all I've got. <laughs> Nothing like no... Um, like no uh, major breakthroughs or anything. Um, but just, uh, just trying new things is pretty much what that was. What about you, Richard? Yeah, it's funny. All of us are kind of looking at this in, I think respect to the, the year in which we lived. And for me, this was a really hard year to keep the momentum on the shows that I'm involved in. So for Home On, I ended up with the longest gap that I've ever had between episodes because I just mm. had, I don't want to say zero because that's not fair, but I, I didn't have enough interest in relation to everything else that was going on in our lives as we dealt with COVID coming in to keep it going. And with... The Smart Home Show, Adam and I struggled to keep that on a regular schedule. So it was a really, really hard year for me from a podcasting perspective. And, I, you know, if anything else, I think what it it taught me is that we came out of it knowing that, yeah, we want to keep doing this. We think this is important. We think that sharing information and and continuing to build and sustain a community is important. And it may be harder than it was before, but we're going to continue to do it, even if we can't do it as frequently or as regularly as we originally intended. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on that same note, uh, Sovereign Bohemian says, uh, I wanted, wanted to say Merry Christmas to you all. You really helped me through 2020. And I think I can speak for all three of us where honestly, we could do this and yell out into the void, but getting emails, getting chat responses, getting a live audience for fuck's sake, yep. like <laughs> people popping up in discord, it, it doesn't seem like much at the time, but in in retrospect of the year, there have been a lot of times when the whole reason I got back on this mic is because I wasn't shouting into the void. And I knew mm. someone out there was listening, and if I could bring a little quarter of a smile to their face with some stupid shit I did this week, <laughs> you know, like that's... <laughs> Like I'm always going to be a self-deprecating asshole, but at least I can make somebody smile with it. Then <laughs> it's fucking worth it. And then Absolutely. we we have you know, and we'll talk about it here in a minute. But we have the streamathon coming up, and really everything we do with Ritual Misery throughout the year is a ramp up to the streamathon. That's really what it's about. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'm just I'm thankful for everybody that tunes into anything, any of the bullshit shenanigans Kent and I do. Uh, the other stuff that I do with other people. Uh, I'm sure Richard feels the same way. Like if it wasn't if it wasn't the audience, we this this entire podcast would be a phone call with another person for 20 <laughs> minutes a week. Like you know, <laughs> right, but but right. the fact that there's people out there that care and want to listen really make it uh, really make it worthwhile to do and to continue on with the tradition of of making sure that other voices are heard other than just just the voices in my head. <laughs> right. Well put. Um, yep. Yeah, I, I was going to add something, but no, I think you covered it, dude. Um, <laughs> that's great. Um, but you, you mentioned it, uh, the streamathon. That is one week, well, one week and a couple days. One week and one day from now. Like, we're a week away <laughs> from the streamathon. Uh, it's the annual tradition, uh, sixth annual now. Um, where we get together and stream for 27 straight hours to raise money for a charity. This year, it's going to Extra Life and the Children uh, Children's, Children's Miracle, Miracle Network. Network. Yep, yep. Um, it's it's awesome. We've um, we've already got some money raised um, in our uh, in our team, 
And uh, I think I think we've got a good chance of breaking some records this year, dude. Um, we've got an amazing, amazing slate um, lined up to include uh, Tom Merritt and Sarah Lane are going to be doing Goodyear Internet. Yep. And uh, the one that you know, I'm looking forward to a lot of things on um, on this year's Streamathon, but the one that's just near and dear to my heart that I cannot cannot wait for. I'm so excited about is Jenny, Jose- Jenny Josephson and Matt Flanagan are going to bring back Tell It Anyway for one night only for the Streamathon. A live and episode produced I, by me. Oh my God. Oh my I God. am over the moon about this. I yeah. can't even begin. I can't even begin. I want to like, I want to up my pledge to Tell It Anyway as a Patreon uh, as a Patreon a provider, <laughs> I I I want to up my offering to them to like by I don't know a thousand percent. I wanted ten times what I offer them, just because they're doing this because I love so much what they do with Tell It Anyway. It is such a wonderful experience. Also, yeah. by the way, if you like that, you should also check out their thing about walking around Disneyland because let's holy crap Disney. let's walk about Disney is friggin' amazing. Yes. It's intended yep. as a limited series and I uh, shamefully I have not listened to it yet. It's in my oh, queue though. It is oh. so good. Yeah. It's good. Um, it's really so I'm I'm actually saving it for a good. day. I'm I'm saving it for a day when I need that storytelling pick me up like i'm because if you watch the show you know i go through my ups and downs um Mm. i'm waiting for that time when i just need a storytelling pick me up and it hasn't happened yet since they recorded it but when as soon as it does happen you'll know because i'll tell you all about let's walk about disney yeah so definitely check that out and these two i'm so excited about them being on i absolutely love jenny I have never met Matt, but right. oh my God, he blows my mind <laughs> in what he's capable of doing as a storyteller. Yeah. Um, sure. As of right now, we have raised $703 as a team. We have a goal of 2078, which will break last year's record. And we're already a yep. third of the way there. And we haven't even started the main event. Woo! Yep. That's awesome. That is so. awesome. Um, but yeah, so so check it out. It's uh, ritualmisery.com slash streamathon for the schedule and all the information. So definitely or, check that out. Uh, is it dcstreamathon.org? Oh. Now I gotta I gotta check that. Is that a thing? Do we have that? Yeah, I remember it's been talking a thing about since last year. I just I suck at life, so I don't rem- I, I never remember. <laughs> Um, well, I know that the the Twitch channel is twitch.tv slash DC Streamathon yes. for Diamond Club Streamathon. DCStreamathon.org will take you to the appropriate site. No need for a bit.ly. DCStreamathon.org. Link in the show notes, of course. Look at that. The website's working and everything. <laughs> look. Look. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Richard, where can people find out more about you and the things that you do and the uh, wonderfulness that you are? Ah, you muted again. You're wonderful about everything except (laughs) muting yourself. Oh, man. (laughs) Sorry about that. All right, see, I'm trying so you don't hear my old man cough all the time. All right, so you can check me out at the digitalmediazone.com where I occasionally write, but more specifically, I host a couple podcasts. And the one that if you're interested in smart home technology, you're going to care about is Home On. So check out Home On at the digitalmediazone.com. And also I host Entertainment 2.0 about streaming and digital media technologies there. Kent, how about you, man? Check me out on Twitter. I am at RM underscore Del Noche. What about you, dude? 
soon to be posted on anthonylemos.com is a blog about how I missed this year's solstice due to weather. Um, I've been trying to take pictures of, this, of the summer and winter solstices. This year is the first year I remember the winter solstice, but the weather, uh, 30 mile an hour winds at 32 degrees, heavy snow and dense cloud cover did not make for the event I was hoping for. So I didn't go on the 21st or the 22nd. I will be blogging about that shortly on anthonylemos.com. It links to all my socials. Nice. And um, at Ritual Misery on Twitter, if you want to follow the show. It is. It, that that is a way to follow the show. Uh, find out about uh, live events when we go live, when when we're when we're not live, and just randomly retweet some shit because we forgot we were logged in <laughs> on the Richard Misery account because Twitter's uh, app sucks. Um, I'm Amos. Uh, that's Kent, and we had a Richard. And this this show. Well, you can find more of the links to support this show at RitualMisery.com. That's your cue, Kent. Oh, we're live every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific, on twitch.tv slash ritual misery. Uh, thank you for the music, Kevin McLeod. We like Kevin McLeod is just he's he's the sound of the internet. Like if you've heard he's the internet. A bomb. <laughs> <laughs> he's a no. bomb. He's awesome. He's friggin' awesome. Yep. Yeah. Um, thank you for listening for Kent, for me, for you, and for Richard. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. It helps when I don't have the track muted. I was like, why isn't the music playing? This is bullshit. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this broker. <laughs> Ouch. R-I-T-U-A-L-M-I-S-E-L-Y